안녕하세요. 나는 광우예요. Welcome back to another episode of the Stevie Weeby Show. have a very special guest tonight. Please welcome back for the second time on the podcast, actress and comedian Margaret Cho Part 2. 안녕. 안녕하세요. 네. 감사합니다, 누나. 네. 네. 이거 뭐야, 이거? 이거 우리 강아지, 우리 루치야, 우리 딸. 우리 딸. 치와와야. 우리 딸. 너무 귀여워. 어, 너무 She's four. She's four? Yeah. Um, can we talk a little bit about her? Can we talk about you, Lucia? She's a, a beautiful chihuahua. She's um, from the uh, Michelson's Found Animal Rescue. You rescued her? Yes. Where is it located in LA? It's in Culver City. Mm-hmm. And um, she is a really good girl. And she pretty much goes with me everywhere. Although, I don't know why you haven't met her yet. Because she's usually with me. But maybe sometimes... Uh, but sometimes she's not. But th- but I usually take her. Usually even at the our little yeah our little club we, yeah oh, the club we go to yeah mm. so sometimes she's there but not in that particular building oh, but in so other buildings sweet. she's really so sweet. Uh, why out of all the dogs that needed help why how did you pick her well she just um, I picked her up and uh, she just fell asleep in my arms and I couldn't I couldn't let her go oh, and I wow. just really. I'm, I was sort of given her and her sister, who uh, looks exactly the same, but she has black nose and black eyes. But um, when she saw me, she put her nose in my elbow and fell asleep, and I oh. couldn't leave. She was so tiny. She was like a a six-inch Subway sandwich. Oh, she was that She small? was so small. Oh. And now she's a little bit bigger. She's about five pounds, but she's a really good girl. And was she was she potty trained? Yes. So well, I did that. Yeah, you did that. Yeah, I did that. So what was her demeanor? Because um, I love watching videos on YouTube where the dog finds out they're getting adopted, like the b- before and after. Oh, I don't know because she was so young. She was only about eight weeks old, so I think she wasn't really aware. She wasn't aware of um, it being a sort of a maybe a negative thing to mm-hmm. be rescued or not be rescued or something. So because she was not astray for very long she was just at the very very beginning of her oh. life now does she get along with other dogs uh she does and she has two uh cat sisters and one cat brother oh so really? i have three cats yes because chihuahuas are known to be a little sassy they're bossy well yeah. she's bossy she's the boss yeah of everyone which is uh you know very apparent when she's and also she has a leather jacket with barbed wire oh, on it she's really yeah. badass she is badass she's really like bad ass and she is she smart yeah too? she's smart is she a good guard dog like yes if you, she hears something outside your place very much so yeah she she's warns very you. very aware of what's happening outside uh-huh. and she's really um you know, she's just on top of it. She just really knows what she's doing. Mm-hmm. Um, God, it's been a while. You been you haven't been here for like, I want to say like two years. Yeah, I think it's longer than that. It's been long, like three or four years, something like that. It's been a long Cause, time. Uh, the last time I was here, I lived by here. You like did. I lived actually at um, Selma and Coanga, which is such a weird neighborhood. Yeah, it's such that, a weird. Wait, let me let me try to get the visual. It's Ooh. by the Dream Hotel. Yeah. It's sleazy. Was the neighborhood it's, sketchy? It's so sketch. Like, w- it's real, so was sketch. Like, it what, like, in what ways? It's just really, like, um, it's really uh, busy. So there's a lot of people. Because mm-hmm. it's either people that are clubbing or people that are up to some no good business. That was about <laughs> the old Amoeba. Kind of. No? Kind of, yeah. 
Kind of. And then you have all the bars it's on It's right Kawinka. by the Jack in the Box. Oh, yeah. So it's like real s- sus. It's right by Vine, Sunset and Vine kind yeah, of Yeah, it's sus. Because yeah. Hollywood, you know, up there, it's pretty sus because it's so crowded. Yeah. You it's know? getting sketchy around here, too. It's because it's, a, it's all sort of spillover because it's so crowded up there. Because there's a abandoned house uh, right over there. And oh. uh, we've had to call the cops up several times and they because uh, of... Uh, you know, crackheads and squatters yeah. and everything. Yeah. So they boarded it up, but then mm-hmm. now um, my neighbor caught, because she has cameras and stuff, mm-hmm. another, they, they there's a new group of people there. Yeah. And yeah. I think they just do meth or... Yeah. Do, yeah. It's like that. So I lived up right up there. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I did have, um, you know, uh, kind of a nice time there because I also do kind of love Hollywood because it's so sus. Mm-hmm. Like I love Hollywood Boulevard, even though it's just sort of gnarly. But I always really admired it, you know, from when I was a teenager and I came to L.A. It was like one place that I always wanted to be. And Wait, I always, Hollywood? yeah, Where always are you loved from L.A. Again? Um, from San Francisco. That's right. And, dude, I just want to let everyone know, she's the OG. Like, you're more OG than my brother <laughs> and all these other a- Asian comedians. You paved the way, didn't you? I Well, yes. I Respect I, it. I really, um, and I'm so grateful that uh, your brother's doing so well and all of these Asian comedians are doing so well. Yeah, because I am the one. You're they the one. followed in my... They got to bow down. Like, they do. Because Korean they, they tradition me, is, is respect. They give me a lot of respect and I do love they bow, it. Do they, do they bow? They bow and I give them $20. And New Year's. Really? Yeah. And I I'm, I mean, they give me jobs and we're, we're doing good. Yeah. I'm really grateful. Yeah. Um. How did you, speaking of, you brought up my brother. Like, how did y'all meet? Like... How, how do we meet? Was that in the 90s? Or we mu- I don't even remember. That's the weirdest thing because I feel like I've always known him. Yeah. I believe we probably met at the comedy store or something like that. Mm, mm-hmm. That um, it seemed to be, uh, it, I feel like it was something like that where um, he was there. But then I don't know because I feel like I've also always known him. Really? Isn't that interesting? So you think you've known him for like two decades or something? At least, yeah. You've I known must him for have. like 20 years. I must have, yeah. Huh. I mean, that's that in my mind, th- I, don't, I don't have a sense of like in the genesis of the relationship because he's always been there. Right. You know? Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Was it, has his demeanor changed through the years? Like, has he gotten a little bit more cockier? I don't know. I think he's always been that way. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to ruffle some feathers, you know. Well, I don't know. I mean, I think, uh, but he's always uh, been that sort of like um, confident, yeah. you know, yeah, that kind of thing. But then every time before he goes on stage, he's like, he is always like in his head about it. He's so nervous. Really? He is nervous, I think. Still? Yeah, I think we all, I think all comics do. Yeah. Now, um, I, I was, um, I, I'm on iTunes and like I buy movies and stuff on, um, Apple and mm-hmm. out of nowhere, I seen like you're uh, during the, in the comedy section, you're, you're, one of your specials is up there. Oh yeah. 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 yeah so yeah. Can, how many specials have you? Oh gosh. I think I've done about s- six or seven or eight. I can't remember. I don't know. <laughs> my Quite a bro- few. My, my brother hasn't done one. Which he, I always tell him he has to do one. I mean, can out of everyone in the world? Yeah, he should do one. No, I'm saying you and maybe one other person are the only ones mm-hmm. that could get through. I to told him. him. So I'll tell. Please, I'm doing. Luna, I'm doing Tiger. Please, please. Yes. When you see him, I'll please. Tell. I told him. You I'll did? tell him again. But you have to. No, you have to really get through to his head because, you know, time is of the essence. Why won't he do one? I think it's a psychological thing. He gets in his head. There's several factors. I think with him, there's um, uh, maybe an insecurity as far as the material because if he knows, because he, he's, he's done that material for so many years and it works in the clubs. Mm-hmm. And I feel, this is just a hypothesis. Mm-hmm. I think that he feels like once you get it out in the universe and do a special, then he has to start back from scratch, mm-hmm. don't you? Oh, well, I mean, I think that we all have that, though. All the comedians have to have that sort of identity of like, oh, are we going to be able to top ourselves? Like that's where, you know, we're always going to need that in our corner. That mentality really helps us go back and write better, better, better material and better do better for ourselves. But it's always challenging. 
Um, now, have you just said it in passing, or have you like really like pulled him to the side to have a conversation with him? I think I've said it in passing a few times, but then really? I don't know if it's. I, I, I wouldn't say that would have any less weight than taking him aside and say, "Look, you've really got to do this." So right. I think it, it's all, I'm always serious, no matter what. Yeah, yeah. I just, I you know, I'm, I'm his brother. I just want, I just want, you know, because like with comedy with y'all, that's like your album. Yeah. You know, you got to put out your yeah, album. Yeah, you got to put out albums, yeah. Put it out. Absolutely. So I think that, I think that if he does do it, um, I, sh- I think it'd be great. Yeah, maybe, he should do it. Maybe he could film it in Koreatown. It'd be so good. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be fun. Or he would film it probably at the comedy store. That's like his home. Yeah. And then you have, you've been there. When did you first go to the store? I started going to the store probably uh, a little later on. I think a little bit like maybe about seven or eight years ago. Yeah. I've been there before then, but I started to go more regularly about seven years ago. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I, I still don't do a ton of shows in town as like I, I have a monthly show that I do at Largo. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, I'm on the road all the time. Oh. So when I'm on the on the on, you know on the road and then I come back here, I kind of sort of don't really want to go out and do stand up as much. Have you done Joe Rogan's club in Texas? Not yet. Okay, but you've heard of it. Mm-hmm. So I heard it's called the Mothership or mm-hmm. something. Yeah, I yeah. just heard that's the new thing in yeah. town in Texas. Yeah. And um, I guess that's a premier club just yeah. in the whole state, right? Yeah, it looks yeah. cool. It, it's a cool thing they're doing out in there. The, yeah, right. I mean, absolutely. Expanding the whole. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. What do your parents think about the tattoos? Oh, they they Oma really. Na, Oma Napa. Uh, 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 yeah. I love your. Yeah. They I they they, they no. My parents. Um, well, when I was growing up, we had a uh, a guy that worked for my dad who was covered head to toe in tattoos in the seventies. Really. And they would put his photograph of his tattooed body on our refrigerator. Mm. Because they thought it was just so amazing so that this pl- guy the seed was planted. Yeah, mm-hmm. like they, I've been surrounded by tattoos um, and people getting tattooed for my whole life, mm-hmm. and my parents have never discouraged it. Although with me, they're like, oh no, but they don't really feel bad about it. I mean, they, they're like, they could never control me anyway, so they, they sort of accept it. Okay, <laughs> let's do a little role play because I like what you did right there. Uh huh. Okay, um, I'm you. Okay, and I go. Oh my, you go pa. You know when they don't know what to say, they go, Kase. Kase. This sounds amazing. Kase. Chowama. I agree with that. Yeah, why do Korean you do it so well, like <laughs> capturing? That's it's, why it's do they active. Always it's active listening. It's it, it, most of Korean is listening and comprehension. So, so it's like receiving the message. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Kuchi, kuchi, kre. kuchi. So, like, you could probably get away with, like, minimal Korean if you're really good listening. If you can understand what they're saying. Yeah. You probably have a g- good, you know, people, like, like to just be heard. And then we, they want to actively hear you're hearing them. So, but with you and other Koreans, I know with you, they accept you right away because you're Korean. You mm-hmm. can get away with it, even mm-hmm. though you're Americanized mm-hmm. and all that. But mm-hmm. with me, they know I'm. I know. What do you mean you're phony? Yeah, I'm not you're really real. Korean. You are. S- <laughs> no, they go. Hanguk uh, ma moteo. Moteo. Yeah. Like, uh, oh. They know. They just. No, but it's very fashionable. Well, what is it? well, what it's is fashionable it? to be American-born Korean. They love American. No, born they love BTS and all that shit. Well, they, they do. Like they do that 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 yeah. as well. But yeah. the lately. Korean Americans are very popular. When did that the changing of the guard happen? It's with. Um, a lot of K dramas. There's always in K dramas now. There's always one Korean American, really? and there's that's like very exciting. Yeah. And the, have it. you heard of this phenomenon? Even Western like white women will go to Hangul, Korea, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to find a boyfriend. Oh yeah, because of the K dramas. So love you, K-dramas. it's because of Netflix and the K drama. I think it has something to do with all of the Korean culture that's exported all throughout the world. Also, South Korea's greatest export is male beauty. They love a handsome man. A but Korean they do so many custom. Uh, you go, uh, sankupul, 
쌍꺼풀. 수술을 해서 수, yeah. 수술해서 So that means uh, face surgery, eye surgery. No, but no, I mean it's still I think Koreans are generally very good looking and and I think that it's just part of our culture to um kind of like cultivate that too. Yeah, yeah. Um are you a fan of K-pop, you know? Yes. That? You are. I love I love BTS and I love uh Astro, RIP Moonbin. I love Wait, so um, can you spell it out again? Astro. Astro. <laughs> it's so good. Moon Moonbin Moonbin just died. Oh. They're okay. b- wonderful, beautiful. Is it a band? Uh, Astro is uh, a band, and Astro Moonbin Moon. was one of the artists in the band. This is from uh, South Korea. Yeah, and it's K-pop. Yeah. Um. So so rest in peace, t- um, uh, Moonbin. 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 Yeah. Rest in peace. Um. So you're familiar with JYP? Yeah. 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 So describe to the viewers and listeners who JYP is, what he stands for. He is like um. Uh, a ki- like the way that K-pop is met, ma- it's a very manufactured art form. And so mm-hmm. they have um, people who are like these talent firms that develop talent and, you know, debut the talent and they work with them for a lot of years. And so um, JYP is like an old school star. I mean, producer, he, would you say? He's a producer. Talent scout. He's a talent scout, but he was also like a big star too. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like if the uh, American equivalent would maybe be somebody like Justin Timberlake. You know how Justin yeah. Timberlake was really kind of uh, popping inf- back in the day, in- and now like influenced people, and, and now he scouts. Now he's groups, yeah, like he found together. like people, you yeah. know. So it's sort of like that. When's the last time you went to Korea? Twenty eighteen. Really? Yeah. Is it changed? It's uh, it's well, it's changed now since twenty eighteen a lot, but um, I well, haven't been since back since like the nineteen nineties or yes. t- early two thousand. Yes. Like my mom, that's her dream. Yeah. Is to go back to Korea. She oh, hasn't it's been. Oh, c- incredible. So she would have a culture shock. Yeah. Like I would go there in the 80s and um, it was so different. And now it's like, it's super futuristic. And like Japan, like Tokyo? Yeah. Or really? Even more so in a lot of ways. I think it's more, it's more, J- Japan can actually be kind of um, a little bit 80s. Japan's a little bit stuck. Really? In their their big heyday in You've a way. You've been to Tokyo? Mhm. Oh, I've been all over Japan. You've been all over. Yeah. Um would you ever consider living in Korea? I would love to live in Korea. Really? But I think um it's well it's like something that I I had always thought, oh maybe one day I'll go back to the mothership. That mothership, the real yeah. mothership Korea. Maybe. Right, right. But I love America. Yeah, you do. Yeah. I've always wondered, um, what I wouldn't be able to survive out there, huh, if I went out there. But they have such like good communica- food. No, I know, but like uh, communication. Well, people really um, love to speak English. They love to practice. But I'm, I look, cor- they would go, well, he's Korean, but he can't speak Korean. No, but then you would be able to, you pick it up right away. You think so? Yeah, you pick it up right away. Because we know it from how much our parents spoke it. But I only understand when my oma, my oma speaks to me. Yeah, but they would they would be able to tap into that. You would totally recognize what people are saying. Yeah. Pretty incredible. Now, um, going back to your folks, were they supportive? Because, like, Koreans could be hella judgmental and stuff as far as their sons and daughters, but were they always supportive with what you, what you did? They didn't really understand what I was doing, but mm. I was just like, they, they couldn't... Um, control me because i was just a wild child and i wanted to do whatever i wanted to Mm -hmm. so i just ran away from home and then by the time i made it back home i was on television and so i was like on that show on uh on all american girl all american girl but even before that i was doing television um comedy specials like things with bob hope and stuff like such a long time ago with bob hope yeah i was so really recognize young the og is here everyone <laughs> so respect it respect margaret and her legacy respect it <laughs> bob hope motherfuckers yeah isn't that crazy dude, i gotta bow to you dude <laughs> no no, 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 no. oh Anyo. god respect respect you're with a boss. Little okay, re- recognize it. My little baby. Recognize it. My little daughter. Um. So, um, as far as like, because we both, you know, you know, we've dabbled in drugs now. Call like, were you kind of? D- when did you discover? Like, when did you start getting rebellious with it? Like, 
Oh, right away. Get really like what? Right in, away, like, like high 14, school, middle school, fourteen, like the beginning smoking of high weed. school. Be- smoking weed, drinking alcohol, doing all kinds of dumb drugs, which I actually really regret now because I have so much brain damage from that. Right. You know, because my brain was still developing. When did you start? I had my first because that's so funny you ask. Because I had to do a Zoom. I, uh, someone asked me to do uh, be a speaker for a Zoom meeting, mm-hmm. and I hadn't shared in a while. But I had, you know, I, I'm like, okay, well, I haven't done it in a while, and I, I had, a, I remembered like the first experience with alcohol, and it yeah. was my, um, my cousin Paul. Oh, let me see. I didn't. I didn't say his last name. Uh, Paul, or uh, uh, he he was older than us, and he he had uh he got uh Strawberry Hill wine mm. and i remember drinking it mm-hmm. and like feeling like oh it just kind of chilled me out yeah and then i grew up uh i kind of learned too from my dad because he was one of us and my mom would enable him mm. and she would uh put a uh, cans of miller light in the freezer to get him nice and cold oh wow and she would put like he he drank uh he'd mix it with uh tomato juice Oh. So she would put tomato juice in there, and she, yeah. Is that like a michelada? It's yeah, it's kind of like that, like a bloody beer. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was kind of like that. But he, um, God, he, I think he, he, ne- yeah, he drank for, he. That's what he did. Mm-hmm. And um, so I would take, I would s- steal his beers because mm. we had another fridge in the garage. Oh, okay. Where the, you know he stacked those, so I would go and grab those. Oh, okay. And then you know, obviously, my brother, he was, you know. He was doing stuff. Yeah. He was, you know, I probably took some of his stuff too. Mm. So, and it was a progressive thing for me as far as like just, but once I went to Arizona because I went to ASU, then it was just all, you know, I was just, I was there for like a long time. Yeah. Just doing drugs. Yeah. Every semester. I didn't even know what I was doing, what courses I was taking. Yeah. Just doing drugs. It's doing a, it's too, too bad because like that's when our brain is like growing. Mm. So, I mean, that's like, I think like I feel bad because I, I know that at one point I was really smart mm-hmm. and I like miss that part of my brain, but it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, with the, but what led you to even get clean then? Oh, I was, I was, um. I, I didn't have a choice. I was they I, they didn't. My friends did an intervention on me, and I couldn't get away. So yeah. I didn't have a choice. I had to get sober, or else I would just be, everything would be over. Oh, they did that. Yeah, which is fine. Oh, I mean, that's they fine. they it they, they kidnapped me and they took me to a, a center, and I didn't go home for about a year and nine months. But I I, I did really good there. Like oh. I was, I had to be put away for a good long time. Wow. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um. Is there since um? Did you smoke weed too? Yeah. So yeah. do because nowadays. They have it so good because well, the dispensaries. It is, it is good, but it's also like, um, to me, there's just, it was never strong enough. Even the, even like at the, near the end, I was doing dabs and I, st- I wouldn't get stoned. Really? Yeah. I would be like, yeah, d- doing heavy duty dabs or like using the gravity bong. I, I could not get high because <laughs> ap- after a certain point with weed, you get to a point like where you're just not able to get high. It's very frustrating, actually. Even you try edibles and with edible edibles is just not, not my thing because it, it's like you I always always overshoot and then I just fall asleep. Right, right, right. So right, that's right. not really pleasant either because you feel like you're uh, kind of going under, like it's anesthesia. Yeah. But I just never was able to capture a good high with marijuana because I was so addicted to weed that it just it, yeah. never uh, after a certain point like you can't get high really if i because i have 15 years right now and if i were to to smoke the weed they have at the dispensaries would i would mm-hmm. it would it lose would i lose my mind i don't know i think it's sort of like it it I feel like I burnt out anything. Even if I took breaks, like when I was really smoking weed, I'd still not be able to like recapture that the original first, high. Oh, but another thing, and I'll I'll admit it as far as because so, you know I'm still human. And I still think about I, I'm not going to relapse, but I do think about I've thought about DMT. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you tried that? Yeah. Can we, can I we don't, talk a little? Yeah, bit about, I don't you, like that. Okay. <laughs> Can you, talk, it, it, can you tell me about the first experience? Like, yeah, what is it? I've only done it one time and it was not cool. I want to hear about it. Well, so I'm with my friends. This is a gay couple. And they turned into, their heads turned into giant flowers. And they 
they their bodies turned into green vines and they grew to 50 feet tall and I'm still trying to talk to them but they were 50 feet tall flowers on vines with leaves and rustling but they're they're audible they, you yeah see their, their they're talking move. and their mouths are moving but their mouths are moving in the flowers it was like their the pistol and the stamen of the flower became their facial features and they're talking to me and it was so scary but uh, but also so real like it it's a fucked up drug because you just it plucks you out of the reality that you in and plunges you into to another one but not completely because you're still having the conversations that you were having or whatever so you were you were like awake and your eyes were open yeah your yeah. eyes were open and you're seeing this. Seeing this and like kind of not really knowing what to do. So I tried to play it off like it's not happening. <laughs> but it was really scary. <laughs> and um, when I find then like <gasps> they slowly started to uh, turn back into people. So and they then shrunk again? They, shr- shr- they shrank down really slowly and their, their faces started to become like human uh-huh. from flowers. And it was normal. And only two minutes had passed but it felt like hours it was just a weird thing like one thing that dmt made me realize is that time is just um it's irrelevant it actually doesn't really exist it's just what we put on it right so right. so it's a human construct it's a construct that we, we just like to place uh, like we're trying to have control over existence right so that's what i i came away with realizing oh well time doesn't actually mean anything you had that that was cognitive you had all these things going in your head yeah um i had uh, my buddy sean um was it last week that he was here or the week before we didn't get to it but i asked him off camera about dmt and he said that it shot him out into outer space yeah and he said that He closed his eyes and all these fractals like broke apart Mm -hmm. and he said that he said things would morph like a face would morph into something else. Mm -hmm. He said it was like an outer body experience. Yeah. Is that it's right. That's 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 how it is. It's it's deeply unpleasant and unsettling. Yeah. And it's not um it it's not anything to want. I I realized like when I was doing it, I'm like, I real I regret doing this. He also described it as like he could see when when you die, that's what happens. He's he said something like that. I could see that, but I also like don't need to know about that. Like I'm like right. you know, this is really a, a very unpleasant experience that I put on myself and um I just don't like this. And I, I think, yeah, I mean this this is part of existence but it's not fun yeah and i because we we have dmt isn't it contained within our like body as i guess i don't know because someone told me that and because my dad passed away like three years ago and i was Mm -hmm. in the room in the um uh the nursing home where he was staying at um and i was the only one that visited him after hours and i you know i I brought my ipad and he was like non-responsive his eyes were shut the whole time like because they took his feeding tube out so he was just basically a vegetable, mm-hmm. but I didn't know where like two, three in the morning, I, I was watching Rocky too, and I look over at him and his eyes were wide open staring at the ceiling mm-hmm. and they call it deathbed visions or something, mm-hmm. but I'm guessing now it could have been like some DMT being released. Yeah, maybe. He could have been sort of seeing, seeing light going towards light or seeing people, like I think what is supposed to happen to you when people are dying is they're supposed to see people who have died. Who yeah. are there to like kind of greet them or something? Like in Korean, I know Koreans have ghost stories, but have you heard of the Korean man with the hat or with the, he's wearing a suit or some kind of hat, a fedora? Oh, that yeah, it's the so it's the, the re- reaper. Yes, it's like the Grim Reaper. Yes. So it's a Grim Reaper. Kind of, but it's also like you know the Ajashi that brings you over to the other side. Because he saw that too at the other yeah. hospital. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. he went, ooh, ooh, you know, he kept pointing. Yeah. And my brother's like, what is it? What are you saying? The, da- the Ajashi. The Ajashi, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, Koreans have scary, Um, there's some, well, yeah. some scary kind of folklore. But it's also like um, about existing on the same plane as people who have died, too. So, like, Koreans are... Just very aware of death as kind of just a welcome part of daily life, mm-hmm. you know, because mm-hmm. you're going to be doing uh, rituals for your ancestors and mm-hmm. doing things for your the people who passed on as if they were still here. 
Right. It's and nice. That's always been a part of the culture. Yeah. Like that. You know how, um, uh, like the Hispanics do that as far as uh, what is the Day of the Dead, the Morte? Yeah, with the ofrenda. Yeah, 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 the yeah. Table. So yeah. Yeah. To to pay homage to mm-hmm. the ones that have passed. Same thing. It's yeah, same thing. yeah. So so DMT. I mean, uh, it's okay. It's it's a little overrated. Just wait. Well, I mean, yeah. I just. I yeah. didn't like it, yeah. and it wasn't like the like the drug. I I you know it was like drugs. The drugs that I would do are not like that. The drugs that I I don't like hallucinogenics, and I don't you like don't. visual things. Mm-hmm. I don't like anything like that. I don't like a, a high that's super long. Right. Um, now, did you tell the couple what you had seen that they turned into flowers? Yeah, yeah. It and they they said, oh well, when we did DMT because we all did DMT. Um, like th- within a few minutes of each other. Did you do? You, is it a pen or uh, you can you put it? it uh, you can put it on to weed. So we smoked it on so on it's a powder weed. Or something? Yeah. So you kind of dab. You sprinkled yeah. it in there. Sprinkled it on weed and did it because you only need a tiny, tiny bit. And then and you hold it in. Uh, yeah. Okay. And then <laughs> no, you're then you just take off. By the way, I know I'm asking a lot of yeah. questions about it. So you hold it in and then. Do you right when you exhale? You it's yeah. It takes a few seconds and it's like woo. So crazy. Yeah. Like, it's also, there's so little of it that you think, how could this possibly have this effect? But it does. It's so crazy. How long does it last? Like two minutes. That's it? But it feels like hours, which is the weirdest thing. What? So that's what you're talking about, time. Time is really irrelevant. But they all did it too, and they all had a different experience. Like, one of them said that we melted and we were in hell. Oh, no. And... So I don't remember what the other one said. Oh no! But it was like the other one had a really bad trip. One of the the one the couple. Yeah. A really bad one. Really bad trip. Did was she, did she say that you morphed into something or like? He just said that we were melting and then we were on fire and we were dying and we were in hell. Then we she screamed the whole time. In the did the neighbors complain or? I don't know. I, I think it, we were at his house. Oh jeez. Yeah. So we were like in his garden. We were outside. Yeah. So it wasn't, I don't think that nothing, yeah, nobody heard, but. Yeah, I also heard that you could contact aliens or like go into different solar systems. I'm sure or, that's yeah. true. <laughs> but maybe we don't, uh, maybe after I die, we'll find out. Well, I mean, I don't know. I love an alien. I love all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. I hope I hope that we do. I hope we get to see everybody from different dimensions. Yeah, or like different alien races. Or yeah, like, yeah, that'd be yeah. cool. And then you can meet them too, huh? Yeah. Yeah. She doing okay? She's doing great. Um, now, what are some of your other outside interests um, outside of like comedy and acting? Like, um, like do, do you have like some favorite all-time bands that... You, um, you like? I really. I wrote l- that one down. Uh, well, I did a long thing today. I was doing a podcast today about ba- uh, David Bowie, who I really love. I drew a picture. Of him. He's so amazing. Oh, right here. Oh, beautiful! Yeah. That's a great picture. 1947, 2016. I love it. Yeah, it's so good. So, what do you like about David Bowie? I like how he's always different. Yeah. He had so many different ways of approaching music, and then his voice was always so different. The Ziggy Stardust thing. I love Ziggy Stardust. Yeah. That's probably like one of my favorite records of all time, because uh-huh. every song is so great. How it's many such a albums? Rock he's just so many albums. Gosh, I don't even know. I don't know. even know how many albums. So many albums, but yeah. they're all really different, and they're all really beautiful and really cool he was cool even the end of his life he was releasing yeah videos right? so cool yeah so david boy's number one one and then i love um i mean i love all sorts of music i i'm very into power pop so that would be like anybody like todd rundgren or I um learn from you power pop power pop okay. power pop it's a weird genre uh-huh. that was really about like bands like big star and um i guess the raspberries and oh um raspberries. then later on uh people like the posies and oh um and how would you describe the? It's not shoegaze or nothing, is no, it? No, it's it's it's, it's like power pop is. Um, it's muscular American rock and roll, but also it's got a new wave sensibility. Synth, it's a the little keyboard? little bit of keyboards, a little bit. bit. Of okay. um, I guess uh, you know, there's different people who have power pop. 
phases. Maybe somebody like Elvis Costello would be somebody oh, that I is like, that. A, yeah, 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 like that. Yeah. Um, but uh, Power Pop is probably, it's all sort of Beatles uh, reminiscent, also sort of Beach Boys reminiscent. Oh, really? Um, but Power Pop is my genre. It's music that I play when I play music is Power Pop. I didn't know you played music. I do. I play oh, music. Really? Mm -hmm. How long have you been doing that? I've been playing music now. Well, I played piano when I was a kid, yeah. but I've been playing music now for about um, 15 years. Have you released? Do you have stuff? Yeah, I have albums out. out. I have music. Ta let's music. Talk, yeah, let's <laughs> talk about. Let's, I have music how records do people out. People hear the music and. They can hear it. Uh, I have a record called Cho Dependent, and I have a record called American Myth, and they're both out on anywhere you can get your music on yeah. all platforms but and then how did you do, do record at home did you no no i recorded in different studios all over the world but i um and then the last record i actually american myth i recorded in koreatown wow which was really cool yeah um but yeah i've i've played with lots of cool people like tegan and sarah and andrew wow, bird wow. and um ac newman and um john bryan and so all cool. sorts of fiona apple and i did a song together so yeah, dude, you, my intern's brows just raised. <laughs> I didn't know you're a Fiona Apple fan. She's amazing. Like she's she's OG too. She's very OG. Yeah, she's very. OG. She's a very cool lady. So like, what made you like? When did you start recording music or wanting to record music? I just always loved it. I I've always been around musicians, and it was just a it was a kind of a fun thing. But now I actually just like go and I make songs and. Um, I'm making a, a movie out of one of my songs now, which uh, is really cool. Yeah. So I, I've always wanted to do that because to me, it's the coolest thing when you have a song that's made into a film like Pretty yeah. in Pink or, you know, something yeah, like that. It's yeah. super cool. I love John Hughes. Yeah, it's yeah, super we, cool. I grew up with that stuff. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Um, now, do you like what kind of instruments are in the recordings? Like, I play is it piano, uh, guitar. Keyboard, guitar. Um, that's my mi my instrument, okay. but I don't play very well. But I I but play, play enough to compose. Play. Yeah. And then I can take it and go with it. I I play a little bit of, uh, you know, I have a piano. I play a little bit of synth. I play a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. You know, but um, I only play well enough so that I can figure out what the song's going to be, and then. You know, when I go and I record, then I will we'll work with studio musicians. What's the writing process like? And it, how does that differ from writing jokes and stuff or comedy? It's Some, way different, right? Yeah. Well, like I'll have sometimes I'll just write lyrics and then I just have them. And then I'll kind of fiddle around with a piece of music and then it'll go together. Mm -hmm. So that's sort, sort of how it is. Sometimes it's really fast. Like, you know, when you like I'll be, oh, I got to do this and then i just like write a song and it'll take like five minutes what but is it, that it's so weird yeah Sometimes it's weird isn't it you can just pluck them out yeah of, but you have to record it or at least get it on paper somehow because you can't recapture i can never remember or your audio uh, thing on your yeah. phone you could just do a little yeah blueprint of it it's so great you don't forget yeah. and that that helps and then it, you build on it but yeah that's like um, my favorite kind of thing is and then m the more i do it the better i am at it and like then i'll go uh months without even touching the guitar or n without looking at it or if i get a new thing like i have this new thing called the griffin which is a really weird guitar it's a 12 string but it's also it's n it's not shaped like it. it's it's just a very strange instrument is it acoustic or electric it's acoustic and you get a guitar center or something it's a specially made Comp some company, but they they call it the Griffon. Can you write and down the Griffon, please? It's a G R Y P H O N. Yeah. And um, it's a twelve string thing, and it's it's just a weird guitar that I I really like playing, and so then I can sort of, you know can write songs off that. Yeah. Or I have a thing called the Mando Tar, which is a mandolin on top and a guitar on the bottom, and it looks like you put um, a chocolate bar with caramel and left it in the car and Whoa. it melted together Whoa. so i left my mandolin and my guitar on the so it's a double it, yeah oh so i love double um neck guitars yeah we're two different things. so i can play it all like one thing oh you strum all the way down so it yeah. plays all of it yeah but i that's not how you play it oh, but, you that, don't, but, but you I, that's like how that? i do it like that there's no rules and it made sense yes yes so i'm able to do that um but i just think it's just so fun to yeah. Mess around with music. I had no idea. Yeah. Dude, I, I want to check some of that out yeah. for real. Why is it that, because I'm trying to do a little EP right now, and I've 
sometimes when I sit there and I write and like it's almost like it's like a chore, like mm. I'm like like forcing it. Yeah. But it's but then what you said earlier, sometimes like I did another song where like five, ten minutes, boom. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah, what is that? I don't know. The, but the be- the more that you do it, the more it comes. Like I had this project with another band um, where me and all the members of the band, we did song a day. So That's, we would send yeah. each other every day. That's good We discipline. would sing a song. Yeah. And it w- could be five seconds of a song. It could be a minute. It could be a whole song. But this was like the project was a song a day and it doesn't have to be anything good just, just do it just do it and i got a lot out of that really that helped just to get the it process it was really good yeah do you think like creativity just comes in waves and then sometimes it's yeah there? but if you know how to harness it like doing something like that with other artists where you're not judging it and that you have to focus on the output as just just put it out it doesn't have to be good just put it out so it's bad to judge what you're doing right yeah away. don't judge what you're doing at all at all. Just put it out and then later go back and go, well, maybe this will, you know, be good here. Maybe this this is trash. Yeah. I won't go back. But still, you got it out. So is it harder to work with, like, other people because everyone has their own, like, likes and, like, what they like? And how do you come to an agreement on well, what y'all put out? It works for me because I'm not, I mean, I'm not a band, you know, because right. I'm. it's just my work. Your work. You know, uh-huh. I don't have to, like... um consult with anybody i've never had to to record that way yes so i think if i was recording with other people i mean i i utilize other artists but then i'm use usually hiring them so they'll just do what i say (laughs) so then it doesn't have it it, it's 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 different (laughs) but um so how would you how would you do you just give them suggestions or yeah. are you very and they'll they'll come to me with suggestions too so it's that's go, collaborative that way oh it's collaborative that way yeah but then you get the final say of course of course you go okay I like that yeah because it's my record so yeah. it just totally makes sense <laughs> so that does make sense yeah I get, that's a good way of doing it yeah right? it is but then I'm I'm like I, I'm able to listen to them because they're so knowledgeable about like music constructive criticism absolutely. So you're open to all that. Absolutely, yes. Do you yes. think you need to be open to that to be a good artist? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Especially with, like, well, I am with music because there's only so much of my ability that I can offer as an actual musician on the record, yeah. like, to play things. So I need to ask somebody who's more, you know, Seasoned proficient or yeah. at it to do something. Um, and that then I'll need them. You know, that's important to have yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I always wondered that as far as like, do, do you need that quality in order to, because some, because I'm, I'm sh- sure certain bands have broken up because of egos. Yeah, and, of course. And like not getting along. Of course. Like they just, they're just pushing their idea. Yeah. And the other bandmates are like, oh, we don't like that. You yeah. Know? It's always, hard. It's hard, isn't it's it? It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. So I could see why a person would want to do a solo album like mm-hmm. if they've done, if they've done so many years with the group. And oh, we, totally. We, yeah. Now going back to the that was that was interesting. Um, what are your some of your all time favorite movies? You could even go back in the day. Well, tomorrow, um, my one of my favorite movies is coming back on streaming on Mubi, which is my favorite streaming service. Um, what's, it's it, what's it called? M U B I Mubi. M O M. M U B I okay. is such a good streaming service. But tomorrow, is it free? Is it free? No, it's it's um, I think it's like ten dollars. It's not Tubi. Tubi is the best. Okay, was well, it Tubi or Mubi? Tu- well, Mubi is the yeah. one that I'm going to be excited about tomorrow. But you know about Tubi? I love Tubi. I do too. Tubi is like if you I put you all of it. the big boxes at I the Blockbuster it. together. You know the big boxes that have um, movies like Jim Cotta or like... You, you know, know about Jim Cotta? Of course. <laughs> You'll write that down. Dude, tell them tell because a lot of people might know not know what Jim Cotta is. Jim Cotta is like a weird... Like He's a, a white dude, karate dude. Yeah, dude. like a ex, it's sort of like an '80s exploitation uh, kung fu weird movie, but it's sort of like a it, in in blockbuster you would have these movies that were just so like kind of straight to video, and they were really um, typified by the big box. Yeah, because they 
They didn't put any budget in the film. They put all the budget in the cardboard that they were going to use yeah. to make the box. I remember what it looked like. He was wearing a white kind of jumpsuit. And he's, yeah. It's Flying. like a cartoony. Kind yeah. Of, yeah. But it's, it's just like a classic. That or like Faces of Death. All of those Wait. Faces of Death are on Tubi. They are? Yeah. They're on the, the thing. Faces of Death is on Tubi, yeah. See, Faces of Death was a thing growing up where like... The rebellious kid in your neighborhood, uh-huh. he's the only one that would have the VHS of it. Yeah. And then the the, the, the word would spread along with the, to the other kids, and they'd be like, mm-hmm. hey, Chuck's got that, man. Have and you then, seen it lately? No. It's I haven't so seen, fake. I've seen, I, is it fake? It's so fake. Really? It's really fake. The whole thing is really fake. It's a disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> but back then it was such a taboo, like such a it was the marketing thing to have. It was like the marketing because it was like this thing of like, okay, we need something that seems lurid and illicit for like the home market. What is that gonna be? Oh. Well, nothing's more scary than, than death. And so, you know, the the face it's it's all very fake. It is? Yeah. But it's really entertaining. I mean, I think it's entertaining because it's so stupid. Oh, because you could see through it now. You're like, oh, yeah. Right. But at the time, it was so, it was so. Ooh, yeah, it was all like the so most scary. rebellious, sca- dangerous thing yeah. to have. Like, yeah. Oh, I didn't. So it's fake. Yeah, that is fake. But it's still all out there. Um, what are? I'm just curious. The horror genre. Mm-hmm. What is some of the most scariest horror movies that? You like? Oh, the scariest. The, yeah, just top three or something like. Where, um, like where you're like, that's scary. I just saw. F- really terrifying one um i think it's called incantation it's i've heard about that it's on Taiwanese netflix or yeah taiwan have you seen it Inca. oh my oh, god what's it about is it like witchcraft or? it no it, it's about um this a uh, woman who accidentally uh did a curse on herself like it was like this she went to this like temple and like actually accidentally did a curse and oh. she has to like go back and re- redo it or does it to get it off her. It's so scary. It is. I was screaming the whole time and I really love scary movies. I really screamed. So it's that's really a good. scary one. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. Is it subtitled? Yeah. 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 Netflix kind of has come through with some gr- horror. Yeah, it's a great. A that's bit. a great. That's yeah. a great horror movie. Um, I also loved Speak No Evil, which is horrifying. When was that released? That was last year. Speak No Evil. Yeah. Is that on Netflix too? That's on Shutter. Shutter. Yeah. Speak. Oh, what can you describe? What that? Speak the, No the Evil is about um, this family that goes to another family's house that they don't know very well and it's horrible it's oh. so horrible it's but a it's, norwegian isn't it it's norwegian i, I think seen it's norwegian it. yeah i've seen it i own it i would yes it just didn't click yes they're like oh you know they kept saying they kept being a little bit uncomfortable but the, it's almost like the guy makes them a little bit the mm. family's like a little uncomfortable a little uncomfortable yeah a yeah. little okay. more uncomfortable a little more uncomfortable just just watch it it is it's, it's unsettling so it's upsetting. upsetting it's unsettling the yeah. whole way through it's one of those movies too at the end you're like i can't believe this is what was going on the whole time yeah but I then you also it. can too because you're like i bet that's what it's almost like a movie that's a cautionary tale about don't ignore your instincts when you're feeling as weird. As far as parenting and looking out for your kid. And yeah, when you feel weird about a situation. Smarts, yeah. Right? Yeah. One more. I like what you're doing right here. <laughs> I like what you're doing. You know. um, another good one is The Medium, which is, um, I think that's on Shutter too. Medium? The Medium. The Medium. That's a Thai film about um, possession. It's really good. So are you... Are you into demonic possession movies? I do, I don't re- that's, I don't really seek them out, oh, the but I do. Says you didn't say the extra. Oh yeah, that's I love ultra. that. That's the best. That's the best. That's right? the best. You know what's a good one too? Exorcist three. Oh, Army of Darkness. <laughs> Is it Army of Darkness? It Army it's of the Darkness? one with um, George C. Scott. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that was. Um, that was more comical though, right? That's no, no, but it's well, yeah. I guess it's it's yeah. just more like weirdly elaborate and a very strange. It goes into a different. Is that where he goes back in time? No, it's, oh, it's well, it. it's sort of maybe. I don't know. Yeah. It's a very weird one. Yeah, 
That's a weird one. Have you seen Exorcist 3? That's it. Oh, The Exorcist 3. Exorcist 3. Oh, the, okay. Exorcist 3. Okay. I thought you said Evil Dead for a second. Oh, no, 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 no. I haven't seen Evil Dead 3. You haven't seen the new one? No, not the new one. Oh, you got to watch latest, it. The latest, yeah. You got to watch it. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good. Pretty mm-hmm. good. Yeah, Exorcist 3 scared me, yeah. too. Yeah, it scared me. Who's it's a good the one. actor that, he's a good... Uh, the, George C. Scott. Yeah. He was also in the OG Dune movie with... Um, no, Kyle, no, no, no. Kyle MacLachlan? Yeah, it was the... Oh, God. I think... Is he the one that plays uh, Father Karras? Who's the one that plays Father Karras? Oh, he's... It, oh, yeah. But he's a character actor. He's good. Yeah, he's too. really good. Yeah. He's really good. Yeah. Um, I like the new Dune and the old Dune. I like new Dune. What about the As, old Dune? I like old Dune, too. I mean, tell him about the old Dune. <laughs> old Sting, Dune. Come on, Sting's in it. He's Sting's like, great. Sting is a Harkonian. Ka- yeah. Kyle McLaughlin is great. Yes. Um, it's very steampunk. Yes. It's super cool. It's super cool. It's a really beautiful People movie. People are like, you know what? Like the younger generation, they don't, they're, I don't know. I don't want to generalize, but they, sometimes, some of them don't want to do their research as far as seeing the original one. Oh, of yeah, yeah. And I think that's like my whole theory is I think that that's why they do like these re-releases or redo. Oh, yeah. So they, because they, yeah, cause they're like, not going to want to watch the old one. Yeah, but the old one is so, so good. good. Yeah. So good. Now, did you hear that they're going to redo, what's the, they're going to redo Lost Boys. Oh, interesting. Yeah. The old one is great. Tell them what the old one is about. <laughs> it's a the vampire. old one is a vampire story and it's just a beautiful, it's so 80s. The hair is great. The music Kiefer is great. Kiefer Sutherland's in it. Kiefer Sutherland's great. I did a movie with him. He was, uh, he, he was very strange to be a movie. I did a movie with him. What's he like? He, um was uh like he had his office which was a a a huge bedroom which i don't know how you got a bed in there i mean it was like a bedroom that it was just a king-size bed and it was very interesting (laughs) he was a nice guy yeah but he's a little odd he was very odd to work with really he's a very odd person i think did he make you like could you stare in his eyes no i didn't really i mean I don't know. He didn't have anything like he weird would, like that. Nothing like that. But it, it was just that his, his the office thing was so weird because we were all like in this like low budget movie. I don't know how he got like a king size bed. Why do you have a in bed this, in there? I don't know. Oh. It was just him. So he had an office with a bed in it. Yeah, a huge bed that he would just lay down in, and then um, it was so weird. <laughs> Did he have any like? Like requests, like weird food requests? No, not really. Nothing like that. I didn't see him eat or anything. Is he like. the weirdest person that you've worked with? Like No. Um, what's weirder than that? Ask him for what's a weirder than that? king size bed in a like, little room. Like um, I don't know. I don't think anybody... Mm, maybe Nicolas Cage was kind of weird because he... I did Face Off with him. Yeah. And he um, was in character... For the whole movie, but he switches characters in the middle of the movie. So he... <laughs> That's so weird. It was so weird. Yeah. He's a weird dude. He's huh? a weird but dude. he's so cool. He's super cool. Nicholas Cage I'd love to work cool. with him again. Yeah. He's super cool. He yelled at me at the movie, but it was it was actually my fault. So I think I, I get it. But, yeah. you know, because he was in character. Yeah. Now, uh, you've been in, dude, I can't forget. We got the OG Margaret Cho in the house. I forgot, I forgot about all the movies you were in. Like, can we go down the list real quick? Like, you've been, <laughs> this is like, you've been doing I've it. I've been for in a lot of movies. A yeah. lot, yeah. What was the most favorite movie you've been in? I think the movie that I just finished can we, can a we couple, couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, it's a new film. It's called All That We Love, and it's a beautiful, beautiful movie. Um, and it's about the coping with the death of a dog. Really? I had to cover her ears. The death of a dog. When is that out? I don't know yet. Oh, but we just finished shooting. That's beautiful. It's a beautiful movie. And what's the release date? When's the release date? I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't know. Where'd you film it? Like uh, here, here in LA, yeah. And then who did you write did you write? No, no, no. It, it's uh, uh, an amazing filmmaker named Yen Tan and he um wrote and directed and it's me and uh, Kenneth Choi mm-hmm. uh, and Missy Pyle and mm-hmm. Jesse Tyler Ferguson. And nice. it's it's a gorgeous film. 
And it, that's such a great premise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Are you going to get another dog or is that the one and only? She's my one and only and then I have three cats. Okay. So we we made the, it's an hour's up. Wow. Can we plug uh, whatever you want to? I'm yeah. on tour. So people yeah, can find me at, uh, at margaretcho.com. Mm -hmm. And see where I'm going to be. Mm -hmm. And then is it a regional or is it a national? All over. All over? Yeah. Where can they get their tickets? At, uh, we can, you can find them at margaretcho.com. Go to margaretcho.com to get your tickets today. Yes. Um, your Instagram. And your My Instagram is margaret underscore cho. My TikTok is the Margaret Cho. Mm -hmm. And on Twitter, it's at Margaret Cho. Do you think we, we covered it? Was that we the, covered it. Yeah. Um, I had another question. Yes. You know, I do another podcast with m my buddy Jeremiah Watkins. Mm -hmm. He's a comedian. Yeah, Fox I know him. Scissor Bros. Yeah. Would you be open to doing that? Of course. Like later down the line? Sure. I know you're busy. Let's do it. Yeah. Oh, appreciate it. So <coughs> thanks for tuning in. If you want to help support the podcast, go to patreon.com slash Stevie Weeby. Um, again, I do another podcast with the homie Jeremiah Watkins, uh, Scissor Bros. Those episodes drop every Friday at 6 a.m., Pacific Standard Time. Subscribe there and watch that podcast as well. If you want to send any packages, send all your stuff to 1425 North Cherokee Avenue, P.O. Box 1391, L.A. California 90093. I'm still working on my um, my EP or LP, my project. Um, I'm 72% done with it. I don't need a couple more songs. Um, so be patient with that. Um, did I cover everything? Kamsamida. Kamsamida. Ah. What is Chonmaneo? Chonmaneo. Kamsamida. Kamsamida. Yeah. Anya, 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 Anya,